You know, adventure means different things to different people. And for me, accessing remote areas like this in Shorty is about as good as it gets. But places such as this are slowly being locked up to us four-wheel drivers through conservation and mining. And here, on Curtis Island, we've got a bit of both. But we've been given special permission to access almost the entire island. And I cannot wait to try and photograph this place whilst it's in its natural environment like it is right now. I've got a feeling this trip could be one of the best I've ever done. Looking for a mad deal on the gear that you're chasing? Like this awning, I've got you covered. Keep an eye out throughout this video for an exclusive discount code and get 10% off store-wide for all Full Drive Supercenter YouTube subscribers. And as always, enjoy this adventure because this is an epic trip. Curtis Island is situated just off the coast of Gladstone in central Queensland. And getting there is easy. Just contact Curtis Island Ferry Services and book yourself a ticket. The ferry takes about an hour to reach Curtis, which is just enough time to do some sightseeing and learn a thing or two about the region from one of the locals. It's a pity the place is so ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it. Here's where we get off, at the township of South End. Take my advice and make sure you stop in to see Alan and Elsa at the Capricorn Lodge. Their ham sandwiches are to die for. And it's the last place for supplies too, being the only store on the island. From South End, our plan is to head up the east coast until we reach Turtle Street Beach. From there, we're going to head inland to Monte Cristo Homestead. And that's where George, the station manager, will give us some coordinates for the VMS to show us the hidden gems that we've just got to see. Lads, this is it. We're on Curtis Island. Hey Jamie, that boat of yours, mate, there's already been a couple of low branches. How do you reckon you're going to go? I reckon it's going to be probably a really tight squeeze this trip because, um, you know, these tracks don't seem to be well driven. Yeah, for sure, mate. Look, I mimic both of you two in the sense that I've just got no idea what to expect. But this, not knowing where I'm going, never been here before, absolute adventure of it, this is what personifies four-wheel driving for me. I get so passionate about it. I'm with you on that one, mate. It's all about the adventure, isn't it? And the scenery is already absolutely spectacular, eh? Absolutely brilliant just out of South End Township and we're onto the sand. These tracks weave their way in and out of the dunes just behind the beach. It's a great drive, but be aware, there's a few very big dunes that have some super soft sand, as I'm about to find out. Hey lads, I might just get you to hang up there because there's a doozy of a steep section coming up here. I've already let my tyres down to 18 psi, but this soft sand is really getting the better of old Shorty. No, she's pretty soft at the top of you guys. I might have to knock another couple of PSI out of these tyres. What's your tyre pressure, Grant? Well, that's the thing, you see. I went down to 18, but we'd just come off the... Uh, we just... They were pretty hot, so they could still be... They could still be up a bit high. I'll double-check them now, mate. No worries. Time to have another go. Give it the berries, Graham. And look at the difference. Hey, good work, mate. You ate it for breakfast. Really is a classic example, isn't it, lads, about tyre pressures? Absolutely. Oh, for sure, definitely. You've uh, you just proved that. Well, hey, guys, I've made it to the top. Come on up. No worries. Go on, Jamie. Jamie's turn. Look at the big defender go. Even with all that extra weight, it's up and over. Great drive, Jamie. Oh, good work, mate. Good work. Righto, Glenn. Bring her up. I'm away. Mm. 
This should be a walk in the park for Glenno. With the big 35s and the extra roost systems torque, he's straight up and over. Hey, that was soft. When driving on sand tracks such as these, stay alert as they can drop away in front of you into steep sprawling slopes at any moment. You know, a real rule of thumb when you're gonna do anything like this, and this is a really steep little section, is to keep your feet off the brakes and keep your wheels straight. If you get out of correction, if the wheels go to one side and they shouldn't, give it a little stab on the accelerator. That'll push you back into line again. But it's really important to keep those wheels facing straight down the hill. You don't want to get any side slopes when it's really steep like that. Otherwise, they're good fun, I reckon. OK, lads, I'm down the bottom. Down you come. Whoa, that's really steep too. Whee! Hakuna Matata. Some of the sand tracks meander down onto the beach, and what a beautiful spot. We've decided to come this way to see if there's a chance of getting our hands on some live bait to fish with later. Hey guys, tide's nearly out. It looks like a good place to get some worms. Graeme, uh, you any good at getting beach worms? Mate, I'm pretty hopeless at it actually. I normally rip their heads off. I don't know whether I'm patient enough. <laughs> yeah, mate, look, um, I'm not the quickest, but I can get them. Well, I used to be able to get them. Let's see how I go, eh? Let's try this, mate. Looks good. Well, it's absolutely no secret that I love my fishing. Out here, you can't beat collecting your own bait. And these waters and this sand are home to beach worms, and that's one of the best baits you're gonna find. Now, I'm not much chop at catching them. Don't think I've got the patience. I always break them when I try and pull them out of the sand. However, Glenno lives in Noosa. He's been doing this his whole life. Let's go and ask him just how this is done. Even before Jamie's prepared some mullet head to tempt the worms with, Glenno's already got a point on the scoreboard, and it's a beauty. Go, boy. <laughs> Mate, I, I don't know the technique here. I, 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 they come up, I grab them by the head, and they shoot back down again. What's the secret? Mate, well, an old fisherman at Fraser Island taught me many years ago. Yeah. Is you just hold the bait out in front. Yes. And they they arch up. Yes. And when they arch up, you just slowly squeeze in on them. Yes. And you can, you know, squeeze on them for a good 30 seconds, even a minute if you want, but don't jolt. Just keep that pressure on them. And you'll arch up again, and you squeeze in, and you just, as he's arching, you pull him in. It what seems you have to be extremely patient, oh, and it's harder than you think to actually grab one. Even Glenno, the worm master, is finding it difficult. So what chance have I got? Oh, he's quick! That's Glenno two, Graham and Jamie zero. Wait on, what's this? Yes! I got a worm! Oh, that's I got a worm, that's, that's a snake! snake. <laughs> yeah, brother! Well done, mate! <laughs> I got a worm! Now, <laughs> do we have the worm? Now we need the fish! Our next stop is Turtle Street, but to get there, we've got to hit inland and get around the bluff. However, the terrain is about to change, and it's Jamie that's caught out this time round. What's the hold up back there, Jamie? You okay, mate? <laughs> I'll tell you what's going on, Graham. The uh, the old Briggs and Strat, mate. She's hung up. <laughs> ah, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I can understand when you weigh 14 ton. Do you want me to come back, mate, and push you forward, snatch you forward, or what? No, Graham, just um, just hold where you are. I'll get um, Glenn to pull me backwards because I'm actually diffed out. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going sideways, but nowhere else. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, mate. I'll um, I'll come down and have a laugh at your expense. Is that okay? <laughs> no problem, mate. No worries at all. Turns out Jamie's further back than I thought, but I soon get to see the predicament he's in. I'm going to call the council in, put the bitchman down. Yeah, it could do with a bit of a clean up, a bit rough. Nah, no way, backwards. That's training. insane. It is, it is. It's funny how that can happen, isn't it? Lost me. Jamie, if we had some potatoes, <laughs> we could just put potatoes in there, mate. Cover that over. We'd be planting the garden. You're too, mate. <laughs> hey, Leno. 
Grab that winch, mate. Thanks, bud. Now, the erosion you see here is caused by rainwater along the tracks. Sometimes the erosion gullies crisscross the track in all directions and it can be really difficult to pick the right line if you're not concentrating. Isn't that right, Jamie? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. That means I'm getting dinner made and brekkie made for the rest of the trip. Just that left-hand mudguard on Jamie's truck there bent in a little bit when he's tried to reverse up this bank. We'll just come and bend that back out again. It's all aluminium anyway, isn't it? Oh. oh, he's not happy. He's not happy at all. <laughs> With Jamie out and on his way, we can continue on our way to Turtle Street Beach. From South End, Turtle Street is approximately a 15 kilometre drive but what a breathtaking drive it is. As the track winds its way back out towards the coast, we're presented with beautiful, uninterrupted views of the Coral Sea. Hey, I don't know who put this track in, but I reckon they like the view. They have a whole heap of room over to the west to put a track, and look where they put it, right on the edge of the cliff. I think they built it for us. Spot on place to have a track, bud, because I mean, what, what views? They're views you can die for, even if you did fall over the cliff. I was going to say, almost literally, you want to keep your eye on the road, are you? One more push over this headland and we're pretty much there. And by the looks of it, I think we'll make this our camp for the night. Oh boys, get a load of this. That is Turtle Street Beach, all the way north to Cape Capricorn. How good is that? Absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Look at that bay out there. Wow. You used to be able to drive right up to Cape Capricorn, which I imagine would be one of the best four-wheel drive trips on the East Coast. But now, National Parks has put a stop to that and closed it off to us four-wheel drivers. The track up there now has degraded, become overgrown and almost disappeared, as with many of the tracks that have been locked up by parks. You can, however, make it up there by other forms of transport. And seeing as I'm keen to photograph the unique landscapes up there, I reckon I might have to call in a favour from an old mate. You'll see what I mean later. Reaching the headland at Turtle Street, I can see a fantastic photo opportunity. The view is stunning. The water in the bay is so calm that it looks as if it's a huge silk sheet shimmering in the daylight. It's just spectacular. Hey lads, I'm feeling that there is Turtle Street Beach. It's gonna be a brilliant little campground, that's for sure for us. Mate, I reckon I could stay here for a week. A week? God, I could stay here for a month. Time is slipping away, and we're going to make Turtle Street our camp for the night. There is a designated camping area just at the back of the beach, but you do have to book in and get your camping permits sorted with parks and wildlife before you arrive. I've got to say, this is a truly spectacular place to camp, and the weather is just about perfect. I've got a bit of advice for you if you're coming to Curtis Island. Make sure that you're packing some insect repellent because the sandflies and mozzies will sometimes try to spoil your stay. Once we've set up camp, we're going to head down to the creek at the end of the beach with Jamie's crab pots. Here we go catch a honker. Should be, should be good. <laughs> I reckon it'll be massive crab. This little mangrove creek is teeming with life and it seems the perfect place to get some big fat mud crabs. We've got four pots, so we're going to spread them out near the mangroves and leave them in overnight. Now, all we've got to hope for tomorrow is a low enough tide to be able to get across there and get them back out again. But according to the tide gauge, we should be perfect just after breakfast tomorrow morning. You boys hungry? Mate, what are you making us? If I told you what I was making, you might not eat it, mate. No, I'm making a stir fry. Yeah, that's yeah, all right. Making a stir fry. You know, Jamie is so well equipped for camping, and his landy is no exception either. It's a good thing too, seeing as fires are not permitted up here. Anyway, I'm going to treat the boys to another type of inferno with a spicy beef stir fry. <laughs> Extra chilli, big fella? Mate, go for it. Yeah. Tastes good. Back a bit on there. 
Now, I did say Inferno, didn't I? <laughs> All we've got to do now is sit back and have a sneak peek of the latest four-wheel drive action DVD, courtesy of Jamie's Movie Theatre. Good on you, mate. Hey, look at this bloke. You've had a haircut. I have a savage haircut, mate. <laughs> Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam. But warning, it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter, you get more for less. What a great night's sleep and such a beautiful view to wake up to. Just magic. The plan for this morning is to head to Monte Cristo Homestead to meet with George, the manager. But not before we've had breakfast and more importantly, checked those crab pots we put in overnight. Here we go, fingers crossed. Jenny. Oh. <laughs> Excitement's over. The problem with this crab here, of course, is whilst it's an absolutely cracking size, it's what we call a Jenny. It's a female, female crab, carries eggs, and that's the future of this little creek. So, of course, we've got to let that one go. But that's just pot number one. So we've got three to go. No such luck, unfortunately. We came so close. There was a crab in this pot, but it's done a Houdini and escaped. It must have been a fairly big one too, by the look of that hole it's managed to cut in the mesh. So there are some monsters in here. Some absolute monsters in here. Hopefully they're in this last net. Don't fall over, buddy. Oh. <laughs> oh, one little one. Well, no luck this time, but we've got plenty of time up our sleeves and there are plenty more creeks on Curtis Island. It's time to say goodbye to Turtle Street because we're heading inland and onto private property, Monte Cristo Station. Monte Cristo is a working cattle station and it occupies over two thirds of Curtis Island. Now we've gained special permission to explore and access this huge area. And of course to visit places that only a few ever get to see. I can't wait. Firstly, we're heading straight for the homestead where we're going to meet George, the manager. George! Good mate, yourself? Good to meet you. Good to meet George you. knows this land better than anyone and he's going to point out some of the places that we just have to see and experience. This is where the real adventure will be set out for us. <laughs> Do you reckon we can have a look? Yeah. Alright, let's go and have a look. Yeah, and this, the cattle crossings, where we cross the cattle. Yeah. George has an yeah. old map of the island yeah. and it's so big that it covers a whole wall. He points out some of the most unique landscapes that I'll be able to photograph. He also points out a creek and reckons that we'll catch a mud crab there for sure. Uh, that one there is uh, Barker Creek. Right, interesting. Yeah, but he then goes on to say, good luck in getting to some of these places. Some of these tracks haven't been driven for years. We've decided to head to the west of the island to reach our first VMS waypoint, Barker Creek. It's here that we're hoping to find our mud crabs. Hey lads, you know the old story, you're not going to catch a whole heap of fish, you're not going to get too many mud crabs in places that people have been before. So you're probably wondering what the heck we're doing going down this overgrown track. <laughs> well, I reckon if we push down here to this little finger of a creek and try and get the tinny in down here, or at least do a bit of fishing, we might be in with half a chance. What do you say? Mate, I'm with you. There's a bit of a log here, boys. Just watch it, he flicks up on you too. <laughs> flicks up all right. Well, 
the west side of Curtis Island is littered with creeks and there still seems to be a fair bit of water around. Water is great for photography and I just can't resist this opportunity. The boys and I were just driving along the track here directly behind me when I noticed this beautiful little lake. Now, the black colour of the water is actually caused from the tannins that come down from these trees here. The trees being white are contrasting beautifully on this black surface and the surface itself is almost like a mirror. Now, when I see things like this out here, I just can't help but grabbing the old camera and trying to capture it. Looks like water is the word of the day, because now the weather's turned for the worse and it's raining. This should make things interesting. Hey guys, check out that steel pipe on the right hand side. But that can tell a story. You reckon that'd have been there a long time, mate? Eh? I dare say at one stage it was probably a bridge through here. Yeah mate, I wouldn't be surprised either. As we head deeper and deeper into the bush, the track is closing in on us and it's beginning to fade. Sometimes it's only the VMS that is keeping us heading in the right direction. Right now, we're almost at our goal, Barker Creek. This track hasn't been driven in, well, could be over a decade. So it looks like these feeder creeks have just completely washed out. It's making navigation very difficult. Man, I love this stuff. There's a lot of different types of four-wheel driving out there, from the hardcore track to just going down the beach to wet a line. I love it all. But this stuff is what really gets my blood pumping. When you can't even find a track and you don't know what's up ahead, but you do know that you're on the lookout for that ideal spot that not many people get to. And I know that not many people get up here because I can hardly see the track. Oh, Glenn, this looks pretty nasty up here, what I just saw Graham go through. Is he through okay? Yeah, he's gone through no dramas, but it's um, it'll be interesting for me. Just wait a second, Jamie, mate. I'll run back and just guide you over that hump, buddy. Shorty and I made that look pretty easy, but Jamie's truck is a heck of a lot bigger. The big problem we've got here is the extra weight on top from that boat. Nice work, Jamie. Yeah, get the wrong line through there, and you could be in all sorts of strife. Thanks, Graham. Especially when you're a bit top heavy, such as Jamie at the moment. Now Glenno's going to make this look easy, he's an experienced driver and that big G you are here as well, it speaks for itself. All done with these. Good on you mate, too easy. Well, that was good. I reckon another couple of hours rain and that would have been a bit of a different story through there. We've got to come back this way yet. Yeah? <laughs> more rain he's on right. the way. We've come too far to turn back now. But we are running the risk of all these creeks filling with water should the rain continue overnight. And at this rate, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Finally, we've reached our first waypoint, Barker Creek. Yeah, I'm just popping out now. And, uh, mate, <laughs> mate she's gonna, you're gonna need a pretty special outboard motor here. A mud paddler. Mate, yeah, see if we can follow this down. Because we're not too far from the main estuary, mate, so... Are they mangroves up there? Yeah, 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 we got it all. Getting close. I'd say that not too many people have travelled along here, eh? No, you might even be able to say we're the first, mate. It's a good feeling to be here, but now we've got to try and find a suitable place to launch the tinny. So we're going to continue on foot. <laughs> the search is on. What do you reckon? Go for a wander down and have a look, eh? Oh, wow, oh, She's muddy. Oh, yeah. You know what that means? Where there's mud, there's mud crabs. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get that boat in first. You'll carry that down, can't you? Yeah, no worries, I'll just put it on my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we have found water at least, but it's not the best place to launch the tinny. So we're going to jump back in the four-wheel drives and look further along for a better spot. But not before I've captured some of these wonderful mangrove structures. The search continues, and we're back on the hunt for better access to the creek. The trouble is, where there's water, there's thick mangroves. I know that we're not likely to find a boat ramp around here anytime soon, but there's got to be a gap where we can get Jamie's truck and boat at least fairly close to the water. And I think I've found just the place. Hey, 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 this looks like a perfect spot, lads. We can get the boat down there, can we? All right, how about we get some pots in the water, boys? This looks promising. Woohoo! 
How good is this? We finally got down to the river's edge. You know, having the boat can be a little bit cumbersome at times, but when you get to spots like this, where no one else has been, this is as good as it gets. Jamie's boat loader is worth its weight in gold here. Within minutes, we're into the creek. Armed with the crab pots, it's time to set them overnight again. Well, that's if we can get the boat off the bottom of the creek. It's Jeepers, creepers. Tide's a bit low at the moment. We're having a few difficulties with the old tinny because the, uh, the exposed rocks are playing havoc with us. But this water just screams mud crabs. We've put two pots in already. We've got two to go. What do you reckon, Jamie, just up in here? Yeah, I think so. Here we go. Well, that's all four pots in. Now it's just a waiting game. While we're out in the boat, it just makes sense to wet a line. But with the outgoing tide, we decide to give that up before we end up marooned out here. On our arrival back to the trucks, we realise we're already in a bit of a sticky situation. <laughs> well, as you can see, tide's gone out on us as we were out there putting those crab pots in. There's no way we're going to carry that boat up here. Well, everyone thinks the winch on the front of your truck is just to pull you out of a bog, but there are so many uses for a winch. From falling trees on the track, getting them out of the way, getting firewood back to camp. Heck, I've got a mate that uses it as a long lead with his dogs when he goes camping. The moment though, I'm gonna give Jamie a hand, try and pull that boat up here so that we can lift it up on these rocks. We're all just gonna sink down there if we try and do that. Stay where you are, mate. Yeah, I'm not going far. <laughs> all right, let's get that winch in there. In. Just goes to show, a winch doesn't have just one purpose. And it always really does pay to think outside the square a little bit. That would have been a horrible, horrible job if we had to try and carry that boat through the mud. But yeah, you pull out trusty old winch, winch it up, makes light work of a difficult task. Not too far from the creek and we pick up another track. We're trying to find a clearing big enough to camp. But out of the silence, I hear a voice come over the radio. It's Glenno and he's had an accident. Hey guys, um, I'm off the track here. I've hit something pretty hard. You've hit something and you're off the track? Yeah, mate. Um, mate, I don't know what I've done. The steering's all over the place. I think I've done some damage. Mate, I'm on my way back. I'm on my way back. Copy that? Yeah, I'm coming back, Glenn. Glenn has hit a stump, and not only did it throw him right off the track, but it's completely obliterated his alloy rim. That would have scared the, the, the jeepers out of you. It did. Didn't know it was coming. No. And the uh, rim's given away. Well, let's cross our fingers and hope that that's all that you've done. That's right. He's real lucky there wasn't a tree here as he Why came off the track. This is why it's so important to carry spares with you when you travel. You never know what's going to happen on adventures such as these. The good news so far is that both the front wheels are pointing in the same direction. We haven't got this one off on a kilter, which would indicate that everything's OK. She spins freely, so the brakes look to be OK. So fingers crossed, that rim has taken all of the impact. But I'll tell you what, I reckon poor old Glenno's going to need an extra beer tonight. Is that it there, mate? That'll have to be it. How on earth did you miss that, buddy? No, I didn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the side of the rim. Just clip yeah, it. Yeah, 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 just in there. Well, should we keep going and make sure you can steer in a straight line? Yeah, mate. I think so. Gee whiz. A log of that size in the middle of the night with all the lights blazing, it is so easy. You can see with that over there, you can see how you just missed that in a second. And uh, the consequences could have been a heck of a lot worse than they were. Finally, we find a clearing and we can set up camp. What a day, what an adventure. I wonder what tomorrow will bring in getting to our next waypoint. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? 
Kings has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. Bright and early, we're back at the creek to collect Jamie's crab pots. The pots uh -oh. further up the creek haven't brought us what we were hoping for, but it's not over. There's one more to check. Hey! hey that's a good size. Yeah, that's, that's a right. buck too. That's Great. We've got what we came here for. It's only the one, but it's better than zero. We're on course now to reach our next VMS waypoint, the Marine Plains. This is one of the natural wonders of Curtis Island, and I can't wait to see it. To get there, we've got to cross back over to the other side of Curtis, and then head north to the base of Cape Capricorn. Hey guys, we're popping out onto a, uh, looks like a little feeder creek here. It looks like we have to go directly across it. Oh wow, there's a bit of water there. Looks a bit tight for me too, with that boat on top. <laughs> Once again we find ourselves on an overgrown track that has not seen any traffic at all for at least five years. It'll look too bad there Graham, eh? The exit of this creek crossing is very overgrown, but I was hoping this bush would just brush aside. Turns out, I was wrong. <laughs> you shouldn't have spoken! Why did you speak? <laughs> <laughs> it just sunk down. Just give me a second here guys, I'm just uh, I'm gonna have to engage a bit of a diff lock here. Um, try again, eh? You want me to come and spot you? No, I should be right, mate. I don't want you, you know, to get wet just yet. I'll give it another crack, eh? By changing my line and heading further to my right, I'm able to get some traction. But it also means I'm right up against that small shrub. I think a long just grab your front flare, too. I think that's Lee took his worries there. <laughs> just lost the rear flare as well. Nicely done, mate. Nicely done. Yeah, I'll have a look at all the the damage, mate. All right, well, this will be interesting. Now, here comes Jamie, and look at the size difference. That big boat really makes things difficult for him in these overgrown and tight tracks. on a weird, wild angle there. <laughs> Am I good? You're in all sorts of problems there. Eh? Am I? It's really sicky on that side. Oh, I'll just put a front locker in there and I'll just yeah. drive out of there. You should do, because it gets better just on this side. All right. Nice one. Well driven, mate. That was beautiful. Good drive, mate. Really well done. The big GU of Gleno sits somewhere between Shorty and Jamie's truck. I reckon he's going to have no problems now that we've cleared all the muck out of the way for him. Use the front locker there just to help it pull up that bank. Top work, buddy. Gee whiz, that yeah, big GU on. is an awesome bit of kit. Spot on. Make, Make it look easy, mate. Mate, I wouldn't say easy. No, 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 it was... But it was, it does, it, it, it sits well on the ground. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Let's do it. Get Let's move on. Well done, guys. As we distance ourselves from the creeks of the west, we move back into the dense bush that occupies the centre of Curtis. It's here that we discover a whole variety of four-wheel drive obstacles that are trying to stop us from reaching our waypoint. Yeah, just a bit of a log there, slowly, slowly, and then we've got a bit of a gully up here, mate. Ruth, look out for the sinkhole. Wow, that's erosion, isn't it? That's a showstopper, that is. Your left hand rear wheel's about to go down. Copy that, yeah, I've just dropped down in it. Gently, gently, eh? We don't want to lose you. Nice work, mate, nice work. In places I can't even see the track out here, it is so overgrown. Struth, gents, I don't think we're going to be able to do much to avoid the old 
four wheel drive pins driving through here. Look, it's not too bad for Jamie, I wouldn't say though. You can just um, race down to the local hardware and pick up a new paint job for about 40 bucks. 40? It's truth, mate, hang on. Aren't they about four dollars a can these days? And I thought you guys were my mates. Now, I thought that travelling with you guys would be a nice thing, but obviously not, eh? He said I was nice. You can just pick it up and put it on top, mate, you know that. <laughs> With a bit of persistence, we pass through relatively unscathed. We've reached the east coast once more, and we're right on lunchtime. What a great place to stop for a bite to eat, and on the menu, here's mud crab. I'm thinking, boys, we head down the beach, we plant it up, bring it up here and get it on the boil, and then crab sandwiches. Nothing better. Spot on. There could be something better, mate, and that's if you get your coffee machine out. Uh, yeah. Make us a cup of coffee. I'll, I'll agree with that. <laughs> Mud crab can be a little bit fiddly to prepare. First of all, you've got to clean the crab. Then you break it up into the individual parts and place it into a large pot of boiling salted water. Okay, we give that five minutes, let it cool down. Beautiful. To go with the crab, I'm going to make a very simple seafood sauce, and there's no rocket science here. It's just a little bit of mayonnaise in some tomato sauce and stir like crazy. If you've got ice, place the crab on ice so that it chills down instantly. We don't have that, but we do have plenty of cool fresh water, and that's just as good. How good is that? That is going to be absolutely sensational. I'd hate to think what you'd pay for that in one of those fancy five-star restaurants down in the Big Smoke, but for us, it's completely free. It's going to get the meat out of there, put it in a sandwich, get the boys to come over and enjoy it. This will be superb. Delicious fresh crab sandwiches and a coffee from Barista Haddon. Nothing better to recharge the batteries. Right now, we're on top of our next waypoint. Hey, by the look of the old VMS here, this massive, massive area, it's actually, I think, the Curtis Island Conservation Reserve. Now, old George said this, it was something like 7,000 acres of open plain. Actually, was George saying that this goes underwater uh, some times of the year? Yes, mate. And he, uh, he indicated when he said that, up to chest high. Looks like a way in just down here, boys. Follow me. We've done it. We've reached our second VMS waypoint, the Curtis Island Marine Plains. The marine plain is a beautiful 4,700 hectare wetland that attracts large flocks of migrating waterfowl and diverse tropical bird life. What a wonderful opportunity to see such an amazing landscape that is of international significance. Hey, I don't know if either of you two blokes have been over to WA yet, but um, there's a little place over there called Broome. It's on the coast. If you're coming from the south, you've got to go over a thing called the Roebuck Plains. And I swear, oh, yeah. this could be a mirror image of the Roebuck Plains over in Broome, Kimberley, WA. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I've been over there, I know the place. Wow, how absolutely stunning is this? Will you take a look at it? These are the environments, these are the landscapes. I'm so passionate about photographing and then taking home with me. But it's hard to do because whilst I'm here and I can see this as it is now, how do I capture the absolutely stark nature of this in a photograph? You've got these flat, flat, long plains, massive skies, and then dotted all around are individual trees. The way I'm gonna do it is using an old technique, an old tip, it's called the rule of thirds. In order for me to try and explain that to you, let's just go down here and I'll draw a quick diagram. Think of this rectangle as the viewfinder of your camera. And as you can see, I've divided it up into equal thirds. Hence the name, the rule of thirds. Well, how does it work? It works basically by taking your subject matter and placing it into one of the thirds within your viewfinder rather than just plonking it in the middle. Now, in this instance, we're out here on this great big plane. It looks fantastic. I've got a tree in front. I'm gonna place the tree 
into the right hand third just so it's got a bit of space on either side of it. Have a look at that horizon out there. Great big sky, the grass, it looks great. And I want to try and emphasise that. If I put the horizon directly in the middle of the frame, I don't know, I just don't think it looks right. Put it down on the bottom third, however, with all that expanse of sky, and it shows the emptiness, the vastness of the landscape that I'm seeing here at the moment. So the rule of thirds, that's basically how it works. Why don't you ever practice at home? And see what you think. I reckon you're going to find it's going to add a real bit of bounce, a bit of pop to your photos. Our time on Curtis is coming to an end and I've got one more waypoint to reach. You see, I'm really keen to photograph Cape Capricorn and I know you're not able to drive there. So the next waypoint is a place where I'm meeting someone who can help. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have got quite a little sinkhole here. I think I might engage a bit of rear locker here, because this could be quite nasty. To say the least. On hitting that bog hole, I really didn't realise just how deep it was going to be. You know, one of the things about being the first vehicle on a track is that you have to tackle the tough sections without any information. I don't know if you saw that, Glenn, but geez, he nearly went over. You've really got to know your truck on these angles. I know where Shorty is right now, fingers crossed. I can take it just that little bit further. It actually looks a heck of a lot worse than it is. And I knew I wasn't in too much danger. Other than when I started to come up the far bank, Locker using on. the front locker to claw my way out. It was about then that I thought I could go over if I'm not careful here. Yeah, I don't think I'll, uh, I don't think I'll crawl out of this without nasty ramifications. Actually, just a spot might be all I need, just to let me know if I can actually come forward. I think your left-hand rear is going to come up, so... Yeah, mate, that's what it feels like to me too, but, um, yeah, just, just if you could have a look for us, that'd be good. Oh, oh that feels better. A couple, oh, couple hundred kilos on the back. Jump on the front, mate. <laughs> but with Jamie on the side, I had no trouble at all and drove straight that's out. beautiful. Woohoo! Not a worry. That's yeah, I found, I found an earth nostril. It's one of those bloody holes. You can't see the bottom. No, you, you no. Just, you no. don't know what's down there. So I just thought, edge into it and see what happens. And I know she wasn't going to go over front was, but coming up that way was just yeah. ever so slightly iffy. Now Jamie has got a much longer wheelbase than Shorty, and he makes it look easy because when his front wheel's in that bog hole, well, the rear of his truck is still back up on flat ground. Over here. Sorry, yeah, fellas. Go over there. Sorry, fellas. <laughs> the same can be said for Glenno. The GU is a super capable vehicle, and those big 35s make that bog hole look half the size that it was for Shorty. Good on you guys. Made it look easy. Thanks, mate. I love it. Nice call. No worries. Another 10 k's of this track and we'll make it. The final waypoint. Yes, we've made it. We've reached the place where I'm going to find my solution to getting my final photo. Well, you might not be able to drive to the tip of Cape Capricorn, but I'm still dead keen to photograph it. And I tell you what, I've got another idea up my sleeve. A quick phone call to an old mate and he's going to take me up there so I can get that perfect photograph. And like always, he's right on time. Yep, I'm going to be flying there. Geez, I'm excited about this. I love my photography in just about any form, but when you get the chance to go up in an aeroplane and shoot something that not a lot of people get to see, well, doesn't that just add to the excitement? I'm so grateful that my old friend here has come to my assistance by meeting me at this airstrip. He knows just the spot I want to reach because he's seen it all before. This machine is like a car to him. He goes everywhere in it. Well, it's time to saddle up and get ready for takeoff. I asked if you'd take me up and go, how much do you weigh? <laughs> Is it more than your plane, mate? <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
We might as well go and have a fish, eh? Yeah, we'll leave that for fun. We better get dinner. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. As the airstrip disappears from view, it's not long before we're right over the top of the marine plane and boy, it looks awesome from up here. I can now see the sheer size and I can see that we only scratch the surface from the ground. Next stop, Yellow Patch. This is a part of the Curtis landscape that I simply couldn't miss. Yellow Patch is an amazing 20 storey sand blow on the top side of Cape Capricorn that grows steeply up from the waters below. Yellow Patch stays true to its name as it glows a bright yellow lighting up the underside of the plane. What a magnificent sight. While we're in the air, I get to capture a bit more of Curtis Island's fascinating scenery. And to finish up, we saw straight over the top of the lighthouse at the tip of Cape Capricorn. What a privilege. That was absolutely awesome. And I got my shot. Do you reckon they could have planted these trees in any more perfect a position? It's absolutely stunning up here, isn't it? Perfect. Go for it. Folks, look, as I said at the beginning, I had no idea what to expect when I left the barge and stepped onto Curtis Island. I didn't know what I'd find. Would I find a landscape that had been touched by mining and agriculture? Or would the whole island be blocked off due to conservation? Well, I'm happy to report that I've had a bit of a poke around and really nothing has had a major or lasting impact on Curtis Island as it is today. Sure, to the north there's a lot of conservation, but you can still get up to Yellow Patch, take your boat up there and camp in one of the most spectacular campsites I've ever seen. Of course, I did see it from the air. South, everything's opened up. You've got Joey Lee's campsite on the beach, and of course, who can forget Turtle Street, one of the most magical campsites I've ever had the good fortune to visit. What's the future of Curtis Island? Probably, it's very unsure, like anything else. I do think it is gonna have some sort of industry on it, and perhaps even some tourism. But you know what, folks, the great news is, no one really knows right now. And that means that you and I can still come here and enjoy this spectacular spot. Maybe I'll see you here, maybe I won't. But one thing I am certain about, I'll see you next time on Four Wheel Drive Action. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. Our entire range of Titan storage drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. All models of Titan double drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each draw top also has these heavy-duty spring-loaded tie-down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off-road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double drawer setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros and SUVs with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single drawer on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide and 150 millimeters high. The 1300 millimeter single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40 millimeters of depth, making them 190 millimeters deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880 millimeters long, 470 millimeters wide, and 180 millimeters of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled, and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. 
This uses high capacity, brand new, grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS, able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test, so they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries, though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius, and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's premium camp oven stove your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. 
And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind. One less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two-piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too, with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other, with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. Introducing the insane new Adventure Kings nine inch lethal LED driving light. These things have an amazing combination of both spot and flood light. They have 21,840 lab proven effective lumens per pair. That's over 2,000 more than the previous generation. Plus they have huge light distance performance with one lux at over 1.3 kilometers. These are the LED driving lights that other lights wish they were. You asked and we listened. You said you wanted even more flood of light out of your LED driving lights to light up the sides of the road, the highway, and the tracks. We went back to the drawing board to redesign the lethal LED driving lights to produce exactly that. At the same time, we upgraded the lights to the ridiculously tough King's laser light die cast aluminum housings and three millimeter folded steel mounts. So not only are these some of the brightest LED driving lights we've ever sold, but they're also the toughest. How bright? Try a lab proven 21,840 lumens per pair and one lux of 1,342 meters. That's real world lumens too, not the theoretical lumens that some lights claim they produce. That's thanks to the genuine German designed Osram LEDs for simply unparalleled light performance. We've also re-engineered the lethal lights with a new 5,185 Kelvin color temperature. That means they're just a little bit more on the softer, warmer side. Still a clear, crisp white light, but that little bit easier on the eyes when driving long distances. And of course, you get all the features and quality you'd expect from Adventure King's driving lights, like polycarbonate lenses, the same stuff riot shields and fighter jet canopies are made of, and an IP68 water and dustproof rating, meaning these lights are waterproof to a depth of a meter for an hour. Plus, for the first time ever, they're rated to IP69K. That means they can withstand high pressure jets of hot water. That tough die cast alloy housing features passive cooling fins and a waterproof breather for longevity. 
and they have the ability to run on both 12 and 24 volt, meaning they're suitable for everything from cars and four-wheel drives to trucks and machinery. Including the brackets, they measure 250mm high, 230mm wide, and 115mm deep. They have an attachment system that uses two 8mm bolts on either side to positively lock them in place and prevent them from falling out of alignment. And of course, they use the same plug as all previous Adventure King's lights, which makes them an easy 10 minute upgrade. Just unplug your old lights, bolt the new ones on, plug them in, and you're ready to go. Add in a two year warranty, and you've got a simply incredible set of lights that leave the competition looking a little underwhelming. The Adventure King's nine inch lethal LED driving lights are the best value LED driving lights on the market. We've re-engineered them to be incredibly tough and incredibly bright, They'll turn night into day, and they're on sale right now for a price you have to see to believe. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two tonne ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the Four Wheel Drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure King's MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.